Hello, my name is Rachel and welcome or welcome back to Project Profit. This is a series I'm working on where I take low cost or free secondhand items with the goal of trying to flip them for some cash. And any profits I do make will be donated to different charitable causes or nonprofit organizations throughout the series. Today we're going to try to recreate a designer light and I'm back at it with another table flip. Or safe to say they had Project Profit potential. Just give them the money. Just give it to them. I'm actually feeling a little like scarred right now. Let's hope I don't have the same experience. I gotta say, I have been having a lot of fun with this series, so I am so happy you guys are here because today I have a DIY that I've been wanting to try, and it is this modern Scandinavian weaved shade. Now, typically I see them in more of a pendant style, but they do come in some really unique shapes as well as like really cool color blocking patterns. And every now and then I scroll past these and I think to myself, I want to make one. And if you are a DIYer like myself, you probably resonate with this feeling, but you look at an item and perhaps tragically believe, I can make that. And I can already predict that I'll be humbled by the amount of stringing that I'll be stringing, but the part of me with the blind confidence is way louder right now. So we're gonna try it. <laughs> Why am I in the car though? I actually just got back from Value Village because I was looking for two lampshades that have the same circumference at the base to use for this project. Okay, so I found these bell-shaped lampshades and I'm really happy with the size and the price. I think they're both relatively inexpensive, but the first thing I wanna do is remove the shade from the frame and I'm just going in with a sharp utility knife. So good, it's so good. Now that they've both been stripped, I'm gonna go in with some thin wire just to attach them at the center. And just like that, the base frame is looking so good. Now all I gotta do is get my hands on some yarn. Last night, I found this post for some secondhand yarn off of Facebook Marketplace, which I feel will work great with this project. So after breakfast, I went to go pick that up and I think it should be enough yarn. In the possibility I do need more, I only spent $20 on all of this yarn. It seems like the seller actually threw in a couple extra colors here, which is nice, but I just spent some time and picked out a color palette that I think will be nice. So I've chosen to start with this tan color and anytime I start and finish a new color, I plan to always tie the knot in the center on the inside just to help manage the knots as I go along. So first I'm gonna wrap one half with this yarn ball and I'm gonna wrap it over both the front and the back. Now something to remember throughout this whole process is maintaining a consistent tension. And this isn't that hard to do, but you just don't want some passes being looser than others. So every few rounds I'll check my work and adjust as needed. As for the alternate half, this is where it gets a little bit harder to put the yarn through. So I made this thing called a shuttle and I cut this out of some cardboard in sort of an H shape and this is what I'll wrap my chosen color around for easier weaving. So now with my shuttle, I'll weave over the middle again, except this time, every time I come around the middle, I'll grab a string from the alternate side. And you keep repeating that until you're ready to switch colors. When you're finished weaving, it should look something like this. All right, I have added some color now and I'm actually loving the way this is looking. I've also upgraded the shuttle from cardboard to a thin piece of MDF. It's a lot sturdier now and we have a lot more wrapping to do. And then I just kept wrapping. I kept wrapping and wrapping and I wrapped and wrapped and I weaved and I wrapped and I weaved and I wrapped. 
I weaved and wrapped all the way into the evening. Luckily, I had more than enough yarn, and I think in total this thing took me close to eight hours to complete. But do I think every wrap was worth its while? Absolutely, because take a look at the finished shade. And despite how much time it took, I would make this thing all over again. That is how much I love how this project turned out. And hopefully someone else will too, because I'm about to get this posted on Facebook Marketplace. For my next project, I stumbled across this listing while I was actually looking for the yarn earlier this week. And at only $2.50 a piece, I went and picked some up this morning. Now these are called weeping clay tiles. And apparently they used to be used as a underground drainage solution. But the man that I bought them from told me that he found them in the 1980s and has actually been using them as a wine storage solution, which I think is a really cool idea. And I don't know exactly what I wanna do with these yet, but I was thinking they would be really beautiful as table legs. So I've actually just arrived at the studio because there is a coffee table inside that we were looking to get rid of. And I was thinking it would be really nice if I could actually repurpose it for this project. So let's go take a look. Nothing wrong with this table, but right now it's just taking up space in the office and I only really need the tabletop for this. So first I'm gonna disassemble it and I'm sure we'll find a use for the scraps later. So I've decided I want to go with like a pill capsule like shape, but before I trace it out, I'm just going to trim off the curved edge with my circular saw. Now to make the rounded capsule shape on each end, I'm going to use a staple DIY trick here called the string compass technique. So I start by finding center on the table and you can either insert a nail into this spot or just use your finger like I'm doing here. Then with a string attached to a pencil that is half the length of my table's width, I'll then trace my capsule shape, making sure to keep the string tight the entire time, like so. Okay, we got the capsule shape cut out. I think it looks really nice. I still have a lot of sanding to do, but before I do that, I'm gonna go in with some stripper and get this varnish off. I'm actually feeling a little like scarred right now from the wax cabinet that I just refinished, but let's hope I don't have the same experience right now. Okay, not that it ever looked like wax, can confirm, not wax. So I'm just gonna scrape off all this varnish and I've been left with some stubborn spots, but nothing my sander can't handle. So let's get this thing smoothed out. Definitely don't regret cutting this out of that old coffee table. Now that this is all sanded, this new slab is looking amazing. I'm so happy with the result. And now I'm just about ready to attach our clay table legs, but first I'm gonna play around with the spacing. Okay, so I wasn't sure if I was gonna do four or six, and I'm gonna do six, but I'm gonna do the last two off camera because I wanna keep an element of surprise for you guys. So I'm gonna glue these on with some construction adhesive and we will worry about the top later. Actually, quick stop at Home Depot for glue because what we had in office was dried out. Now that we have some construction adhesive, I'm focusing the glue on the inner of the leg so that it spills out into the center. 
and I feel pretty good about that hold. And now I'm just gonna let this sit to dry for a few hours. All right, last step is top coat, and I've decided to not stain the wood. I never really do this, but for this, it feels right. Just feels right. And this is how it turned out. Just look at this modern Scandinavian coffee table of my dreams. And I gotta say, I'm pretty proud that I just whipped this together from what you could consider scraps. It definitely doesn't look like it though. This thing looks designer. If you wanted to know, this is actually my favorite mug in the office. And this is what it says. My brain has too many tabs open. This is genuinely how I feel all the time. And it's not my favorite because of this awesome little quote on it that I feel like I do relate to, or the fact it's missing a handle. The thinness of the mug and this, the way it feels in my hand. And if you're like me and very specific about the like cups and cutlery that you use, you'll understand. But anyway, I have updates for you guys. Now, as for the pendant light, it has been posted for a couple days now and it still hasn't sold. I have had some interest in it, but no one has seemed to commit to the price yet, which is $250 also. And I know that's a lot, but I have to say, I don't feel right dropping the price just yet, especially in order to have an update before this video gets posted. So I'm sorry, I don't have an update on the pendant light selling just yet, but that might just mean you'll have to tune in to the next episode and hopefully the right buyer has come along. And you know, this is a little lesson in handcrafted goods because the next time you think something is overpriced, it's not. And I understand not everything is affordable, but with the amount of time and dedication that goes into like something on Etsy, for example, just, just give them the money. Just give it to them. Don't make them drop the price. I've posted the coffee table on Facebook Marketplace and it ended up selling pretty much the same day. I actually got so many people interested in that table. I'm starting to think that maybe I should have sold it for a bit more money. Well, no, well. Honestly, it did end up selling for the asking price, which was $250. I think that's pretty awesome. And considering I only spent just under $25 to make it, that's pretty awesome. And honestly, I love those clay tiles so much. The seller did have more. Maybe I can make another table. Let me know in the comments what you guys would have done with those clay tiles. But anyway, for now, when we remove the cost of what was invested and we add up our total profits raised so far, this series has raised $2,124.30. I don't really know how to act, but I just think it's really awesome. Um, yeah. And I'm pleased to announce that most of which has been donated. So if you want updates like that, definitely check out the previous episode of Project Profit where I made hundreds of Christmas ornaments and tried to sell them at a market. You, you gotta go check that one out. I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>